Form 5495, Request for Discharge from Personal Liability under Internal Revenue Code Section 2204 or 6905. In short, if you are responsible as either an executor or a fiduciary uh, to file a tax return on behalf of a decedent, then you would use this uh, tax form specifically to request that the IRS uh, not hold you personally responsible for tax liabilities. So there's a couple caveats here. Uh, you have to be able to uh, determine that you have made this uh, in good faith and that you are uh, presenting the facts related to that specific tax return or multiple returns uh, as you know them to be uh, true. So <clears throat> the Internal Revenue Code helps uh, prevent or helps protect uh, certain either executors or uh, fiduciaries from personally being responsible for income taxes if they operated in good faith. So we'll complete this form, but I wanted to go over uh, what Internal Revenue Code Section 2204 and 6905 specifically state. So uh, Section 2204 is the discharge of a fiduciary from personal responsibility. Uh, uh, basically, after within nine months, so an executor uh, of an estate filing this form with an estate tax return, for example, would be absolved of personal liability nine months after the IRS receives their form 5495. Uh, as long as they are uh, using good faith and they are presenting the facts as they know them to be true. Uh, if you're a fiduciary, uh, like for a trust, uh, then that would be a six month period. That's also in the statute. Uh, there's also a section in there that discusses good faith reliance on gift tax returns. So if you're making a gift tax return uh, under Section 6103E3, uh, then you would be uh, discharged from personal responsibility either uh, after, uh, for any gift taxes that or gifts that were made uh, more than three years prior to the decedent's death, death as long as those gifts were not uh, previously stated on a gift tax return. So basically the the federal statute says that you can't be held responsible for gifts that were made more than three years before someone passed away if they were never reported on a tax return uh, because you have to report uh, the combination of gift taxes and then estate taxes under the unified uh, uh, tax, uh, whatever, whatever uh, exclusion that applies to a gift tax during the lifetime gift uh, is carried forward uh, under the estate tax. So if someone made a, a gift that should have been reported but never did, and you don't have access to those uh, gift tax returns or they were never reported on a gift tax return, then you would not be held responsible. So under code section 6905, uh, it specifically states that you're discharged from personal liability for either income or gift taxes. Uh, if you make your written request and you never hear back from the IRS, then it's within nine months or as soon as you pay the taxes that uh, the IRS has notified you uh, that you're responsible for. So uh, with that, let's talk about the form. So it's basically a one-page tax form. It was last updated in 2008, so it's a pretty standard form. You would see this anytime uh, if you're a surviving spouse or a beneficiary. You would see this uh, when you're working with you know, an estate attorney that's handling uh, the probate or handling or an accountant that's handling your, uh, your tax return. Uh, you would see this. So front of the form basically is just an update on where to file. So if you've 
already filed an estate tax return, it gives you the address where you should send this form. And then on the back, there are some simple instructions, nothing about the information fields. It just gives additional guidance on when and how and where to file. We'll get to that momentarily. So the form itself is just a one page form. Uh, you'll go through it. Uh, you'll see that in this case, our hero John Doe, unfortunately has passed away. He passed away uh, on 6-1-2023. So we've entered his social security number. And then on behalf of his executor, James Smith, we're entering the address as shown. And this is the estate tax return. We're going to enter a phone number where Mr. Smith can be uh, contacted if the IRS has additional questions. So you can list multiple tax returns in the tax returns section. Uh, you, but if, if you are requesting relief from more than one service center, then you will need to file a separate form 5495 for each IRS service center that you file. So in this case, we made it a simple IRS form 706, which is the estate tax return. Uh, the period ended 6-1-2023. That was the date of uh, John Doe's uh, date of death. His social security number and address. The tax return would be filed with Kansas City. Uh, so uh, we put in the date that we're filing this form. Since you're allowed to file this form with an estate tax return, that's probably a common practice. So uh, we're just filing it with the form. So at the bottom, if there's a decedent, a surviving spouse or a deceased spouse that predeceased the decedent, then you would enter that person's name and social security at the bottom. And then you would also attach any documentation. So tax returns, uh, they'll be enclosed, you know, the estate tax return, this is enclosed with that request. If there's a letter of administration or testamentary, uh, if you are a fiduciary, then you would check the other doc, uh, box and you would enter the trust instrument. Uh, so you would have to attach a copy of the trust that indicates you are the trustee. And specifically, you're requesting a discharge of personal liability. So, and then you sign the bottom of the form. Uh, Typical under penalties of perjury, you're attesting that the facts presented are uh, true, complete, and correct to the best of your knowledge. Uh, there is an additional qualification here. Uh, you are certifying that you've never been assessed any penalties for civil fraud for any federal or, a st or state tax matter, and you have never been charged with, indicted for, or convicted of fraud. So... If you can't certify that statement, then you have to attach a uh, separate written statement that outlines the circumstances under which you were assessed a penalty or if you were charged with, indicted for, or convicted of fraud. And not just tax fraud, any kind of fraud. So uh, we'll go over a couple, of, so uh, we'll go over a couple of administrative items in the instructions. So under the general information, uh, basically the IRS normally has three years after any income tax, gift tax, or estate tax return has been filed to assess that tax and demand payment. So what you're requesting here is that the IRS uh, expedite that process to within nine months. You're saying, here's my tax return. Uh, if you don't say anything to me within nine months, or as a fiduciary within six months, then uh, the federal government cannot hold me personally responsible for a tax deficiency if they eventually find it. So uh, there are certain circumstances where if you've extended the date of payment for the estate tax, then the IRS may require you to post a bond as a condition for that discharge. So to clarify, an executor is defined as the executor or an administrator of a decedent's estate who is appointed, qualified, and acting within the United States. Uh, and you should not file Form 5495 
until after you filed the tax returns listed on the front of the form. So you can't, uh, you can't file this in advance of tax forms that the IRS hasn't received yet because you're basically putting them on a nine month or a six month timeline and the IRS is not going to accept that uh, you're giving them notice that they have six or nine months to examine tax returns that they have not received. However, you can send this form in conjunction with that. So you can send this tax uh, form uh, with your form 706. Uh, you can uh, file it at any time during that three year period after filing the 706. But if you file any subsequent tax returns after this one, then you need to submit a new form 5495 because the form 5495 only applies to tax returns that you put on the front of the form and that are referred to in the past tense. So if you expect that you're going to file a future tax return, just know that you you can file this form now and that starts the clock on the tax returns you've previously filed. But if you have to file it one in the future, you're going to have to refile this form again and state that future tax return on the form itself. <clears throat> and then uh, you'll send it to the IRS Service Center uh, where you filed your returns. Uh, if you're requesting tax returns, uh, taxes reported on different returns at different service centers, then you'll have to mail a separate form to each service center. And then what you should file, so if you're not submitting this form with your Form 706, if you've already filed that, you're going to have to attach a copy of pages one through three and any of the schedules that you would attach to Form 706. So, and then if you're a fiduciary, as I mentioned, you're going to need to include a copy of the trust instrument, list of assets that you transfer that are transferred from the decedent into the trust, and then any relevant information. Uh, you don't have to use this tax form uh, to re make this request from the IRS as long as your written request has the same information and includes the same attachments that the IRS is requesting. So. Um, I think that's all we have for this tax form. It's not a very common tax form, especially since fewer and fewer people are filing gift and estate tax returns, uh, but it can, it can be something that you may find yourself needing. Uh, if you do have difficulties with this, you should probably consult a tax professional. And if you're doing this on behalf of a decedent, then you can pay for those, uh, that tax assistance from the estate. So uh, you should not have to go out of pocket for the costs related to proper tax re reporting on behalf of a decedent. Uh, if, you like, if you want more information on this tax form, we, we do break it down in a little bit more depth in an article that we've created. Uh, simply go to our website, uh, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS form 5495, and you should see our step-by-step -step tutorial. If you like our articles, please uh, subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our YouTube videos and our instructional videos, please uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if there are any questions or comments, or if there's a topic that you would like to be covered in a future video, please don't hesitate. Post a note in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.